their silver rubles in uh, a tin buried in the backyard, it's taken out of the economy. Okay. All right. The all right. Okay. First, that's a misnomer. It's not printing money. It's creating money. And the Fed is doing it drastically. Uh, the European Union wants to do it, but can't get away with it because there's not enough confidence in their money. Uh, it's what they're trying to do, and I mentioned it earlier. Is they're trying to compensate for the decrease in V by increasing the M. All right. M is the amount of actual money there is. V is, the, is take that money and every time it's tra it changes hands. Every time I pay you a dollar, every time you pay somebody else a dollar, every time anybody buys anything, that's an increase in V. Right? You take money, you put it in the bank, the bank loans it to somebody else, they spend it, that's an increase in V. You take money, you put it in the bank, the bank doesn't loan it to anybody, that's not an increase in V. Right? 2008 happens, all of a sudden people realize that no, banks aren't the best way to handle money all the time. They can get silly and stupid. Everybody got scared, especially other banks, because they knew what those crazy people over at Morgan Stanley were doing, and said, I ain't loaning you jack. So money stopped moving, right? I can't remember the exact date, but it was in September of 08. There was a day that they broke the buck that the most conservative, safest funds were actually worth less at the end of the day than they'd been worth at the beginning of the day. And money froze. It didn't actually freeze. People were still buying things. But the big bankers that handled massive billion dollar transactions on a daily basis stopped doing it. And that put us within that much of a depression that would have been worse than the Great Depression, okay? So, two things happened after that. One, George Bush, who is not my favorite person. <laughs> that, that you are the, from Texas. Yeah, I am from Texas. George Bush is not my favorite person. Uh, did probably the bravest political action I have ever seen in my life he went totally against his base and actually did the right thing for the economy in spite of what it would cost him politically and what it would cost his party politically. Mm -hmm. And arguably it cost him the election. Uh, but if he hadn't done it, we'd have been in a friggin' depression by the time that the government had changed hands. What he did was the, the whole tarp, and it was handled lousily, granted, but if the tarp hadn't been done, and if especially, it was only partly the tarp, that it was also partly a big part, it was partly the Fed dropping interest rates to, here, you can have it, we're not charging interest this month. <laughs> All the way to zero? All the way to zero. Yeah, any bank, any bank that was a member of the Fed could get as much money as it wanted, from the Fed for no charge. And it still How wasn't enough. How do you become enough. a bank that's a the member of the Fed? I could use some of that money. <laughs> <laughs> it is a loan. It is a loan. You, you don't have to pay it back. You just don't, don't have to pay any interest on it. And what they were trying to do is get the banks to move money. To move money. But the banks still weren't doing it. So they, bought, they took so money, they just didn't loan it out. Right, because they were, their balance sheets were so screwed. They had, they had been playing fast and loose with the amount of reserve you're supposed to have because in like uh, a few years before that, the restrictions on how much money it's, a bank had to keep had gotten very loosened. So a lot of the banks, including Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, had like a 1% reserve, which meant for every dollar in that bank, they, in, they generated $100 of moving money. And that, and when the money stopped moving, those, <coughs> it went down. We lost two thirds of the money in our economy in about a week. 
and we still haven't made it all up. We've made some of it up, and a lot of that made up money is the increase in M. That's what, and that's what a lot of people, some of whom are just don't know what they're talking about, and a lot of whom are being very disingenuous, are, ter are arguing is the radical liberals and it won't work. Um, in the case of um, Ron Paul, I think it's that his political beliefs are so strong that he just can't see what's going on. But essentially what they're afraid of is that they believe that what they, a lot of people deeply on a sort of religious basis and talking economics to them is a little like talking orbital dynamics with a flat earther. There's the quote from the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. Why do planets can orbit other flat planets? <laughs> 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 it has a sort of religious belief. They believe that the, the, in the, in the invisible guiding hand. They believe that if you leave it alone, if you don't put too much money in the system, then the prices will adjust and the prices will go in, down and the economy will sort of magically right itself. And there's a certain amount of truth that, to that. It can happen that way. But it's the a magical writing set itself of a sailing ship, right? As long as the wave isn't too big, as long as the ship's pointed in the right direction, then the shape of the hull, it's going to magically write itself. Yeah, but it can also turn over. Yeah. Uh, it, it has to say oh, oh, this don't, one and that one. Don't, yes. don't, that, 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 don't. It's chaos theory and you're absolutely yes, right. Yes, don't yes, go into yes, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't want sure. uh, No, okay. I did not come here to be taught chaos man. Well, it's not just that. He has the spreadsheet for the writing force of our oh, yes. early shape holes. No, I was Don't not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. But I was going to so say, what does it mean to us in 1632? What does it mean to us in 1632? You said okay. that what it means to us in 1632 is that a certain amount of predictions that I made about the bust in like 1640 are probably not going to happen in uh, Grantville or the USC because the, th the disconnect that I hadn't made, hadn't realized when I, when I wrote those articles means that the perception of the money, of the uptimer money and especially the Grantville money, the USC money, even <coughs> diluted as it will be, is still probably going to be too strong for a monetary collapse, for an assumption that the dollar is going to collapse, you're not going to get a dollar collapse. You, what you're going to get is you're going to get a um, you're, you're going to get a Spanish paper money collapse. You're going to get an Aust uh, Austrian Empire paper money collapse. Your uh, Poland paper money collapse. You're not going to be able to use Russian money outside of Russia. Uh, so what happens to the Allies? It depends. Uh, which Danes. Allies? Okay, the Danes. What's going to happen with the Danish money? Uh, because the, they're, they're almost they're almost by they're, themselves anyway. So, all right, the Dane, It depends on how the Danes handle it. All right, a lot of this it's going to be depending on who writes what. Yeah. Um, the Danes, they're part of the Union of Kamar, but they're not part of the USA. One thing that they will probably try to do when they run into economic trouble, which they will as soon as they start printing a lot of paper money. And you know that King Christian, <laughs> that King Christian is going to start printing paper money. Because it's so cool. Because it's so cool and because he's broke. Right? He just lost the last war. He's broke. He needs no money. His so he's wife gonna start, spends a lot of money too. He, so he's going to start printing it up and it's going to go through the floor. Because it's King Christian's money, it's not Uptimer's money. Then he's probably going to try and tie Danish money to American dollars, okay? And 
that will not work unless he gets an agreement with the, uh, the USA, which he's probably not going to get. Okay. Another one. Well, well, wait a minute. Before you go on with that, how can he, can he not try to change the perception of things? Can he not try to, he has to know about bring it. in some uptimer that he can, as a prominent uptimer, who is either a real expert it. or can serve as a figurehead to try to benefit from some of that same psychological That's effect. almost exactly what we've got Wallenstein doing with uh, the, uh, the Roths. With Mrs. Roth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, who's, uh, but yeah, well, you can try debate. that, it might work. It's going to depend on the writers. It's even looser than I always thought it was. Because of that disconnect, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a public relations game. It's what you can convince people is worth money. The other issue is that you know you get sometimes into a situation. It's a little like I don't have to be faster than the bear. I just have to get be faster than the other right. person that's being chased. So if your money, even if your money and your the economic system it's tied to is perceived as weak, weak if, if it's, it's perceived better. as stronger than the most likely alternatives you may not suffer that much right and that comes back to his question about France okay somebody who's not a, a, a dedicated not tied to the USA at all or, or right not strongly uh, France is probably now, it depends on how smart France is again. Yeah. But let us assume that Richelieu wins the argument for now. Richelieu is going to go with paper money, but he's going to go with gold and silver backed paper money, and they'll give you silver on demand. They're simply going to say the French bank will give you silver on demand because he knows he doesn't have the prestige. He's likely to realize he doesn't have the prestige. He may, if he tries to go with strictly paper money, it's going to be worthless in a month. Well, no, in a year. So is he going to be able to get any backing out of owning North America now? He might. Okay. Uh, he knows where California is. If he says, uh, all right, here, here, all right, here's the <laughs> scenario. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long ways away, yeah. yeah but yeah, keep but, in mind but that developing things are going to happen in France ah. anyways. It's so. perception, not reality. I bought America, California's in America, there's the California gold field, there are the, there's the, there's the, uh, there, 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 there's Arkansas the Arkansas diamonds. Floor. There's the Florida gold fields. There's the Florida gold fields listed in the encyclopedia that we got a copy of. Well, there's the real <laughs> gold field, Dahlonega, Georgia, that's listed. Uh, yeah, let's not forget the Canadian diamonds and Canadian gold. Okay, right. fine. So, so, so that's if you can so that's sell a possibility play for this gold in our hills. England is in a, a well. Situation. Let's not. I want to go someplace before we go to England. Okay. 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 I want to talk about the East for just a minute. Okay. Because there's at least a minor play started with you had to introduce a money called the Becky. I mean, give me a break. <laughs> okay. And so there's at least a minor play going on where we have a fiat currency with no government issuing. Well, actually, we get two of them. Oh, Tooney. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, uh, the Army stuff. <laughs> the, well, that was Viennese the, that's Waltz. That's the Beckys. The Viennese Waltz. The, remember that it's the girls from 